What is going on guys? So today we are going to be replacing the entire cooling system on this 99 E36 M3. The cooling system on these cars do need to be maintained and components do need to be replaced. Otherwise you're going to be looking at some heavier repairs such as cylinder head rebuilds and some other fun stuff like that. So if you get an E36, one of the first things you should be doing is rebuilding that cooling system. We're gonna be using pretty much as off the shelf OEM style parts for this. We're not gonna be doing anything fancy such as electric fans, any of that stuff. This is just a good old fashioned replacement. And we're gonna start with it outside because we do need to drain the coolant. We're gonna be pulling the thermostat, thermostat housing off and the water pump out. We're gonna be cleaning all that stuff, pretty much installing and then there'll be a separate video just on bleeding. So we are gonna be draining the block and the radiator, and let's get started. Tools we will be using. A 19 millimeter open-ended box and wrench, that is for the coolant drain block plug. A Phillips head screwdriver for the radiator drain plug. A flathead screwdriver, I kinda used a mix of various sizes for doing things such as taking clamps off. A 22 millimeter open-ended box and wrench, that's for the coolant temp sensor on the side of the radiator. 10 millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter socket, and an 11 millimeter socket. Now you might not need to use the 11 depending on the size of the engine lift bracket that's on your car. Some of them are 13, some of them are 11. This one happened to be 11, so I need an 11. And a driver to go with those. I used another driver and an eight millimeter hex Allen socket for the belt tensioner. A 32 millimeter open-ended wrench. That's for taking off the mechanical fan if you still have the mechanical fan. And an E36 fan removal tool to get the fan off. In addition to that, I used a couple of jack stands, a jack and a drain bucket to drain the coolant. You will need to get the car up in the air pretty much to drain the coolant, especially on the block. If you're gonna do a coolant system full rebuild, I would highly recommend draining the coolant out of the block just to get brand new coolant in the whole system. So the first step is going to be getting this thing up in the air. I'm gonna get just the front end on jack stand so we can climb under it to drain the block. And I'm doing this outside because you are not going to catch all of it. Let me tell you that right out of the gate. Draining the coolant on these cars is not very clean. All right, so with the car up in the air, now we can start draining it. And before we start draining it, I'm gonna take the fill cap off of the coolant reservoir. So this is gonna allow air to enter the system. So it's not gonna be fighting the drain plug to go back in. So this is gonna make it drain a lot smoother. So on the driver's side, underneath the bottom of the radiator, that little guy right there is our drain plug. So we're gonna crack him loose. I got a bucket right here ready to catch all the fluid that comes out. It's probably not going to, but we'll try. All right, so now the radiator is drained, we're gonna go ahead and put the drain plug back in. Now, because I'm gonna be replacing the radiator, I'm not like super worried about tightening that. So on the passenger side of the engine block, there is a coolant drain plug. So there's your oil pan. Here are your exhaust manifolds. That plug right there, the one in the center by that O2 sensor is the coolant drain plug for the engine block. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. It's gonna be super messy, but we do wanna replace all of the coolant in the engine and draining the block is a critical part of that. The best way I've found is take an open-ended box end wrench like this, slide it between the block and the exhaust manifold and you can get him on like that. So that is on there. All right, once the block is completely draining, we're gonna reinstall the drain plug and tighten that bad boy down. So now the cooling system has been completely drained, we can start taking things apart. So we're gonna make a little bit of room before we actually start tearing down the cooling system. So we're gonna take up this cowl here, the little air thing for the alternator, and the air box to get a little bit more access and a little bit more room to work. So this little cowl has four screws and then two little push pins. So that's one, two, three, four, and then these little pins right here. And these little pins are threaded, and if you just back them out, you get behind that with a little flat head, that guy will just pop out. There we go. 
As for the air box, I like to take the mass airflow sensor off with it just because it gives you a little bit more additional room. So we're going to unscrew that guy right there. Twist the mass airflow sensor off. So this is the cruise control housing and it is bolted to the air box there. So there's a 10 millimeter nut here and there's one on the other side pretty much mirroring this whole assembly. We're going to take both of those out as well. And the other side is right there. This old Johnny can come up. Once you have the air box off, you can access that little guy. So that holds pretty much this entire piece onto the alternator. That guy can come off and this whole cowl piece can come up. That is off, we're going to be taking the fan and fan shroud and the expansion tank out kind of all at once. So a couple things we're going to need to do is this hose. So this hose right here goes through the fan shroud and up to the expansion tank. So we're going to be pulling this hose out at once, sort of with the whole thing. So we're going to need to disconnect this from the little hard pipe back on the engine there. If you look in by the power steering pump, that clamp right there is the clamp we're gonna go after. You can get a little bit more room if you lift this guy and move him out of the way. Now, even though we drained the block and the radiator, there is still gonna be some coolant in the cooling system, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a bucket directly underneath this before I pull that off. Yep. So if you still have these little plastic zip tie things on here, if you just give it a good pull, then this one came undone, so hopefully that didn't break it too bad. So we're also going to be taking this little return hose off of the radiator. So I'm going to take a little flathead, see if I can work him off. All right, cool. And this little clip, that guy right there, if you can get in behind him with a flathead, kind of work him out. You should be able to separate the shroud from the radiator. And we're gonna do the same to the little guy on this side as well. Let's pull the bleed plug out. I'm gonna work this little guy out of here too. Boom. Our fan shroud is almost loose. Lift him up away from there. All right, so now we need to get the main engine fan, but before we do that, I'm gonna take the upper hose off because it's gonna give me a little bit more room to work on it. So that guy has a clamp right here, and there is also a clamp right here. Get him moving. Get our hose off. All right, for those of you guys wondering how to get the fan off, here is a front shot of a water pump. So your fan is pretty much bolted onto these splines. So here's your fan removal tool. You're gonna hold the water pump in place like that. You're gonna come in here with your 32 millimeter and undo your big fan nut. A lot of times I find it's hard to get both nuts on the tool like that. So what I'll do is I'll put it on one and then post it up against the other one like that. And I find that's a little bit of an easier way to get it hooked on. So that's pretty much what this tool is for. It's holding the water pump. I've seen people put their 32 on and then just hit the top of the thing with a hammer and break it loose. The issue is, is that the fan is bolted to this and this spins, right? So you gotta hold this in place. Cause if you just spin the 32, you're gonna spin the whole thing with it instead of just the fan. So I've seen a lot of creative ways to get the fan off. I've heard of people throwing the 32 millimeter on the fan and then hitting it with a hammer and that actually working. If that works, excellent. Most of us just use a normal fan removal tool if you can find one or get one. This fan looks like a little bit of a different design than the ones I see on typically 36s. I don't know what's up with that, but my 32 millimeter is too fat to fit on there with the hardware. So normally you would just put the fan removal tool and hold the water pump in place and then spin your 32 on. For some reason the fan clutch nut is smaller on this car so I think we're gonna take these two nuts off, that one and that one right there, and then go for the 32. 
Now the fan is reverse threaded and you will need to keep that in mind. That means you're going to want to go right to take it off. And once it's off you can just spin it until it drops. But try not to just straight up drop the fan because that's how you break blades. So I'm going to set that down there. So once the fan is off, you'll be able to grab it and lift the shroud and the expansion tank out all as one. Alright, now that it's out, we can disconnect our expansion tank little sensor here, although we probably should have done that before. Alright, so now that all that stuff is out of the way, we can start taking off the radiator. Now I like to take this guy out before we pull the radiator out, just because this connector and the other connector can kind of get confusing sometimes. So we're going to pull the connector off of that. And we're going to undo him. And I'm just going to plug him back in. And he can just sort of hang out in the bay. Now we can go after our lower hose. So we'll go for the upper clamp first. There still might be some coolant in this. So it would be wise to put your bucket underneath the lower hose when you're taking it off. And our lower hose can come out. All right, so the radiator is completely disconnected. It's just being held in by these guys right here. Now these little clamps, clamp things, can be fairly easy to break if you're not careful. So what you do is you dig it in. So work it a little bit, and then take it and kind of dig it down, and then up on both sides and just kind of a back and forth like that and that'll come up and those guys will be free nice and once these are loose the radiator can just come right out on top of that on the bottom here, on both sides, there are these little rubber grommets that hold the radiator on. So you're going to want to take these little rubber grommets off and save them for the new radiator. And there is one on each side. There we go. Alright, once that is off, we can start going after our thermostat housing. So there are four bolts that hold this guy on. There's a 13 here, and then a 10 there, and then two 10s underneath. So this engine lift bracket also gets bolted underneath that. So we're also going to need to loosen this guy. So when we take the 13 off, we'll be able to get him out. So on this car, this one's an 11. I've also seen this one be like a single bolt 13. So it might be a 13 for yours. This upper thermostat bolt right here though is 13. So as long as this guy's loose, you'll be able to get the thermostat off. Now we're going to go for our 10s. There's one under here. One on this bottom corner right here. Alright, once he's off, you can give him a good tug. And the thermostat housing will come off. If yours is plastic, I would highly recommend replacing it with an aluminum one. Jesus! Look at that. So I'm going to take a little screwdriver and just work that out like that. Alright, so now we're going to be going after the water pump. The first thing we need to do is get the serpentine belt off. You don't necessarily have to take the belt all the way off to do the water pump, you just got to get it off the water pump. If your belt tensioner has this little plastic cup thing on it, you're going to take a little flat head. We're going to pry that boy out of there. The belt tensioner is an 8mm. Don't use anything else other than an 8mm to take it off because you will round the shit out of these and I have done it before and it sucks. And we're going to pop the belts off the water pump. There we go. 
Now we're going to take the little 10 millimeters off of the water pump pulley. You hold the pulley, you should be able to get them off. If they're on too tight, you can put the serpentine belt back on and then crack them with it on. That belt will help hold it in place. And the pulley will come off. Now the pump has four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on. So we're going to crack those. And there is one on pretty much each corner of the pump. Now as far as getting the pump off, they can be a little trick to get off sometimes. Sometimes they won't want to come off. This one's already fairly loose. Some of them will be super stuck. Now something you can do is you can take your 10 millimeter bolt from the pump pulley right here. And it has these little holes on the side of the water pump that are threaded. And they fit perfectly. Now if you thread those bolts in there, and then you tighten these things all the way down, it will walk the water pump off. And if you just get them down and tightened, you can see as I'm tightening the water pump, it's walking itself off. So just a tip for you guys who are trying to get your water pumps off, do it this way. Don't beat your hammer. The last thing you want to do is stick like a screwdriver or a pry bar in between the water pump and the timing cover and start yanking on it because then you're going to score the hell out of the timing cover and your new water pump might not seal. So if you just do it by the bolt method and you can get it loose pretty much like that, it'll just take a little jiggle to get it off. And if anything, you can find some longer bolts that'll fit onto that to push it out even further. So there we go, the water pump is out. All right, so once it's out, we're pretty much just gonna clean everything. You're gonna wanna clean the inside of the timing cover there. You're gonna wanna clean where the thermostat meets on the actual cylinder head. Get as much of that crap off as you can. You might also take a razor blade and sort of just get all the old crap off. It's pretty much whatever you can do to just clean everything off. If you're going to use a razor blade, don't dig into it. Just glide it across the surface to get the old crap off. So before we start installing parts, you want to make sure that everything is clean. That the journal in the timing cover where the water pump sits is nice and clean as well as where the thermostat housing sits on the cylinder head. Now, you don't need to get it perfectly spick and span and super shiny clean, but as long as you can rub your finger and you don't feel any gasket material, Make sure everything's wiped down, use some brake cleaner, parts clean, whatever you got. Just get it as good as you possibly can, otherwise you might run the risk of having a thermostat leak or a water pump leak as soon as you fire this thing up and bleed it for the first time, and we don't want that. So make sure all of your surfaces are clean. Give those gaskets a good chance to seal. So we're going to start off by reinstalling the water pump. So here we have the new water pump ready to go in, and this guy does have an up and down. Now if you'll notice, there's a little freeze plug, and it's got a little weep hole right there. So when the gasket on your water pump starts to go bad, that hole is there so it will leak before the seal on the water pump actually blows completely, which is a good thing, but that needs to go down. So that's the direction our new water pump is gonna go. I always like to take and put a little line of coolant on this gasket here, just so it's not going in completely dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and spread that around a little bit. And then we're gonna thread this guy in the way he's supposed to go. And I'll kind of work him in to get the gasket to sit. If you can get him to sit in all the way, that will be best. Of course, the gasket is going to tighten down as we put the hardware on, but I have seen that happen where the gasket actually gets pinched when you're doing that. So I like to push it in as far as I can, and if I can get it to sit flush, that's even better. So now we're going to start threading our little nuts on. There are four on the water pump. So I'll usually take a little quarter driver and just snug these a little bit just so they're not finger tight or finger loose and then we can go ahead and start torquing them so these guys do get 89 inch pounds and I like to torque them in kind of a cross pattern so we'll do that guy that one across kind of like lug nuts on a four lug car I'll just go ahead and double check all of them. 
So now we can go ahead and throw our water pump pulley back on. One thing to note is it's not a perfect square. It's got a little bit of a rectangle to it, as do the threads on the water pump. So if you try and put it on and you can't get some of the bolts to line up on one side, you probably got it on just a little bit wrong. So if it's not sitting on there correctly, pop it off, rotate it 90 degrees, and pop it back on. And these guys also do get torqued to 89 if you don't want to torque them. That's no big deal. So now we can go ahead and throw our serpentine belt back on. So the routing goes from the crank, behind the tensioner, over the water pump, under the idler pulley, over the alternator, over the power steering pump, back to the crank. I like to make sure that it's on all the pulleys except for the alternator pulley. The tensioner, again, is an eight millimeter Allen key, so don't use anything else. We're gonna tension that guy. We're gonna work the belt on. So now we're gonna be installing our new thermostat. Now some thermostats will have like a little hole or an arrow. If it has a hole in it, the hole is pretty much gonna go facing straight up. So you want the highest point because air is gonna flow up in the cooling system so it'll make it a little bit easier to bleed. Um, some thermostats will have an arrow either at the top or the bottom indicating which direction they go. We are using a VEMO VEMO thermostat. This came with the uh, pretty much a stage one cooling system rebuild that ECS sells. So it doesn't really indicate a direction but I'm going to put the writing on the bottom facing pretty much down so it's not, the lettering is not going to be upside down, it's going to be right side up so I'm going to go ahead and assume that that's the proper way that it's going to go. I don't see any indication of any other direction on this so that's the way we're going to throw it on it also came with a new gasket a little o-ring so i'm going to put the o-ring on the thermostat and then we're going to put that boy straight up and he should sort of sink into his little spot in the cylinder head where he should go and you can just sort of hang out now we're going to be throwing on our new thermostat housing now i highly recommend you go ahead and get an aluminum one because the plastic ones tend to break over time the aluminum ones will hold up a lot better and we have this nice machine service and hopefully you cleaned the surface on your cylinder head to provide that a good seal this part of that cooling jacket and then the o-ring for the thermostat is going to seal this portion that doesn't have a gasket pretty much so when we install it we're going to want to make sure that it goes underneath our little engine lift bracket like that and then you gotta sort of find out where he wants to sit so I'm gonna start with a 13 that holds the engine lift bracket on and then we can go after our 10s and we'll go after our bottom two and then once they're all kind of run down I'll just go ahead and tighten them all up in a star pattern with your fingers just to sort of walk the gaskets down a bit more. Then I'll snug them with a quarter driver. So these guys get 89 inch pounds. So I'll start on the top left one. And I'll go to the bottom right. And then the bottom left. All right, so next we are gonna be installing our brand new radiator. Now a couple things to know, we do need to pull some old parts off the old radiator. So there are these two guys, and if you pull them off your old radiator, they're gonna be either right here and right there, or they might still be in the little part on the car. So those guys just slide off, and then they'll just slide onto the brand new one. Applies the radiator. They're sort of like the little radiator mounts. And then these guys, you will find right here, and right here respectively on the old radiator. So these little guys are the thing that those little plastic clips hold on to. So we do want to pull those off and slide those on the new radiator. They should fit nice and snug. And then you'll be ready to go. So I have seen some really bad, really garbage eBay radiators that these don't fit. You could probably stack some like pennies or something to try and get that to fit. If this doesn't sit smooth, the radiator is gonna kind of have some movement in it. Any decent or good radiator should have perfect fitment on all of these items. So if you'll notice that bracket right there, so that little circle hole is where those little radiator mounts are going to sit. 
So just make sure when you drop the radiator in to get both of those mounts where they need to be. So we're gonna drop the new radiator in. Get our hooks where they need to be. Get these lined up and then these little plastic tabs sit in on there. You just push these down. They'll clip into place. Your radiator is in. Once the radiator is in, we're gonna go ahead and throw our little radiator temp sensor back on. So I'm going to unscrew the plug that came with the radiator. I'm going to thread him in. Get him nice and snug. Don't tighten the crap out of him. Just get him nice and snug. And then we can plug him back in. So now we're gonna install our lower hose. If your clamps are not in good shape, then I would not reuse them, but these are in pretty all right shape, so I think we're gonna go ahead and make them work. So we're gonna put our clamps loosely on. Get the new lower on. Radiator, and then we'll get it on to the thermostat. So this hose is kind of being a pain. So I'm gonna stick the bottom on at an angle. I'm gonna stick a little flathead screwdriver on here. So I kind of got it on the bottom and then with a flathead just sort of walk the hose around to get it up and on there. Now a tip for you guys as far as clamping goes, you want to clamp it right in the middle of where it grabs on the thermostat or the radiator. So you don't want to clamp it like this far out on the edge or over the edge or too far in. You want it right dead center in the middle there. Get that tight. Get our bottom one tight. So the rebuild kit that I got came with a bunch of expansion tank components. So expansion tank came with a radiator cap and it came with this new little sensor here. So we're gonna be replacing these things and replacing them in the shroud. Now this guy is kind of the little level sensor here. So this is gonna unscrew on the bottom. And we're gonna kind of orient him something like that. Kind of keep the orientation that the old one has. I've got a little pair of channel locks here and I'm just going to snug him just a bit. Now this is fine using this style of tool because you're not tightening this thing very much because these are plastic on plastic threads and if you yeet it you will crack the shit out of it, strip it, break it. So we're just snugging it just a little bit more than I can with my finger just to get it nice and tight so that seal will seal. Don't freaking tighten the hell out of that thing because you'll break some shit. So now we're going to remove the old expansion tank. So I'm going to start by taking off this hose. So I'm going to pull this hose back just a little bit just to give myself a little bit more slack on this side. And then we can pull that guy out. And now we can kind of work that clamp a little bit loose. Start working the hose off of the overflow tank. Now if you do need to replace either of these hoses, this guy simply just slides off of, and the same with this one. So this thing just runs through that little hole there so you can just feed him out. Uh, when you replace him, make sure to get him sitting in his little spot. He has little clamps on the fan shroud for where he needs to sit in, like that. And as does this guy, he has this little journal right here that he will sit very nicely in there. But now we're gonna pretty much install the new tank, the same exact way that we took this one out. So I'm gonna take some wire cutters because I am gonna be reusing this clamp and just sort of pinch the end of it to get it to stay tight again. You can absolutely replace this clamp with just a normal screw type clamp if yours is bad or you don't trust it. But in this instance, I'm not worried about them. They seem in pretty good shape. And make sure that the expansion tank is bottomed out on the hose. You don't wanna set the hose like only halfway up. Take some wire cutters and just pinch him right in the center there. Get him tight. And then we can feed that back in right there. Get through our bleed screw on. The fan shroud and fan is gonna go back in pretty much the same way that we pulled it out. So we're gonna stick the fan in the fan shroud, drop the whole thing down as one, and then we're gonna have to go after getting the fan on before we get the fan shroud all nice and tight. So again, just like getting the fan off, 
you're gonna have to put the fan back on pretty much the same way so whatever way you use with a hammer or if you use the fan tool so here's the old radiator now these little fins on the side of the fan shroud need to slide in on these little clips right there and right there so as you're sliding the fan shroud on you're gonna want to make sure that all those little fins slide underneath these little clips because if they sit up top and you don't get it seated properly you run the risk of having the fan shroud hit the fan and that's how you grenade fans so i like to sort of come up in a little bit above the radiator and then we'll press it against the radiator and slide it down and make sure that all of these tabs are clipped in where they need to be so if you'll notice all of these clips are clipped in if you're to do it incorrectly you know, you might have one up above like that, or you might have the other, something like that. But just make sure that these clips and fins are sitting in the radiator. You can see them from up top, so just make sure that everything's in where it needs to be on both sides. So I usually like to get the fan shroud kind of down where it needs to be. You're going to have to kind of snake the lower left fin past the lower radiator hose. Then I'll sort of let the fan shroud just hang out while I get the fan started. Get the fan tight. Alright. Then I'll go in and get my fan shroud seated where it needs to be on the radiator. So the shroud is now on all the places where it needs to be. So if you guys remember these little push pins, I'm gonna throw the push pin onto the radiator on both sides. And if this fan shroud isn't sitting quite straight, it might be because this hose underneath or on the bottom is not routed the way it needs to be. Also, this little tab right here needs to sit on the radiator like that. And if it doesn't, it's going to kind of be a little bit loose in that center section and that can go forward and hit your fan. So get that guy nice and in there. So there's that one. I also pulled the bleed screw out of the expansion tank. So we have a little bit more room to move that to get our push pin on. If you don't have these push pins or they're broken, you can absolutely run a zip tie down through the radiator through that hole and then back and just zip tie that thing shut. We can go ahead and plug in this sensor and on the expansion tank right there on the bottom of the tank for reference. And we have this weird little U-clip thing and so that guy is going to sit in like that. Hold our expansion tank in place and now we can thread our bleed screw in. I like to get him finger tight just on the initial bleed but we'll mess with him when we actually do start bleeding the whole system. Now we can go after this hose. This hose goes through the fan shroud onto the radiator like that. Just like the expansion tank hose, if you are going to be reusing this and just sort of crush him a little bit more just to get him tight. So now we're going to be going after our lower expansion tank hose. Again, the fitting for this guy is behind the power steering reservoir. You can get a little bit more room to work on him if you move that guy a little bit out of the way. So he's going to go underneath that evap line there. We'll get him seated on there. Get him nice and tight. We can put that back where he belongs. So now we're going to go after our upper hose. I like to get him on the thermostat side first. And then we can go after the fitting on the radiator. And I like to leave both the hose clamps loose until the hose is on. That way it gives you a little bit more wiggle room to get everything where you need it to be. You can go ahead and get everything all nice and tight. Now we can reinstall that little alternator cooling duct. Leave him kind of loose and we'll go ahead and throw this upper cow back in. And this part of the alternator duct does tuck in kind of like that. It'll kind of clip into place. And we can get that screwed down. Get his little clamp tight. Don't tighten this thing a whole bunch. He pretty much just holds it in place. You don't need to 
he man it. Just get it nice and snug. Then we can put our hardware, including the two push pins. That is going to screw back in. Then we have the adjacent side. And once that is on, we can go ahead and reinstall our air box. Get that seated. And he has two little 10 millimeter bolts that hold them in place. One is right there. You don't need to tighten the crap out of them, just get them snug. Nice and snug. All right, so that is it. Our cooling system has been completely replaced. Now, I will have a separate bleeding, cooling system bleed video for bleeding these motors. I will leave that in the description of the video down. Be sure to check that out to make sure that this thing is bled properly and that you have no issues, no air bubbles, air pockets, any of that stuff. But aside from just straight mechanical replacement, we're completely finished. We just have to bleed it and then it'll be ready to go. So be sure to check that video out. I will see you guys the next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh and I will see you guys later. Search but you stay alive